everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Today we're going to play a little game. Of course, if you've seen the title or the thumbnail, it probably spoils the game a little bit. But that's not the point. <laughs> the point of this game is I'm going to give you a little information about the guitar I'm working on, and you're going to guess what it needs. I knew what it needed as soon as I saw the tag. Alright? So here's your first little bit of information. It's a Gibson. Does anybody have any guesses as to what it needs? All right, here's a little bit more. It's a 65 Gibson. And a little bit more than that, it's a 65 Gibson J50. If you don't know what it needs, I can't really give you any more information than that, but I'm guessing most of you probably know what this guitar needs. And that is a bridge replacement. This is a 65 Gibson J50 with an adjustable bridge. I'm going to replace the bridge on this with a non-adjustable bridge. That's what the customer has asked from us. That's the only thing this is in for. And that's fine. It's a pretty straightforward process. I gotta get the strings off of here and this bridge apart. That's gonna be probably the biggest thing. Well, I say that. The biggest thing is gonna be getting the bridge off the top. So I'm gonna set this down and we can start tearing this thing apart. So I thought I might actually play this a little bit before I go taking it apart since it's up to pitch. So you kinda have an idea what the old bridge sounds like. Hmm. I noticed something's ringing. Or it shouldn't be, but gonna focus on that right now. You know, I think it's almost nice and bassy. It's just not quite there yet. Like the the bass is just muted just a little bit. Like it could be, but it's not. Alright, well before. So now we'll work on our after. Alright, so I'll set this down here and we will start taking the strings off of here. Alright, nice and loose. I'll pull those out. I'll keep the pins in order. Um, usually it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. Mm, those don't want to come out. So those are all in the order they came out. Um, just something of note. A Martin bridge, I have one here that's going to go on a Martin I've been working on, goes like this with the flat towards the head and the rounded part towards the tail. But on a Gibson, it goes the other way with the rounded part towards the head and the flat across towards the tail. So that's the way I put it on my bridge pin holder. So I'll remember this way is forward because this is a Gibson guitar. So this is the low E and the high E. I'm not going to take those strings all the way off just yet. I may want to use them in the near future. I'll go ahead and take this saddle out. There is a pickup in this guitar, but I really don't know where it is, and I hope it's not under the saddle. It does not appear so, unless that's it. I don't think so. Huh. There's a little metal plate in the bottom of there. It doesn't want to come out. I don't know that I've actually seen that before. I'm trying to think. Usually these are... I don't know that I've seen the little metal plate underneath the saddle before. The saddle might be bone. But anyway, we'll move on from here. Um, we're basically ready to start talking about how we're going to get this off of here. I'm going to have to get the two screws out, the two screws that are underneath 
the two little inlay dots. I assume that they're there. They usually are, and yes, they are. And there's the pickup. No, nope, maybe not. There should be a pickup in there somewhere. Yeah, there's the pickup. It's the uh, three little dot piezos, I believe, sitting right in the center. So, usually it's easier to take the nuts off on the inside of these screws because they're, well, they're bolts. On the inside of the bolts, take the nut off and then push against the bolt and it pushes the inlay out. That tends to be the easiest way I've found to get them off. So I'll go grab a wrench and maybe loosen the nut on the inside and see if I can't get something moving here. So I've got a little quarter inch wrench. I've already got the nut off of the treble side. I got this turned up on its side now and I'm just getting this one out. Almost got it. There we go. Just that little thing. I may try prying just a little bit. I'll see if I can't find a good way to do that. Oh, that one came out. You probably won't use these again, so it doesn't much matter if I tear them up. There we go. Two for two. Kind of full of, I assume it's CA glue, whatever they use to put those in. Kind of full of junk, so it's kind of hard to get my screwdriver to go in there. It will, but it sure doesn't want to stay in there. If nothing else, we've improved it already just by taking these screws out of here. They end up cracking the top more often than most things. Because when the bridge comes unglued, they just torque on the top and put cracks in it. Alright, there we go. We got the two screws out. And now comes the hard part. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, the heating tool we use out start heating this bridge up I think on some finishes it's a little risky to put tape on it because you'll end up pulling up finish I don't think that's going to be a problem on this guitar it's in really good shape so I am going to go ahead and put a piece of tape I've got some thicker blue painters tape here I'm going to put it across the back of the bridge Probably going to put a piece up front as well, just to be safe. Because this finish is in pretty good shape. Especially compared to some other ones that we've removed bridges on. So, so I'll go get the heating tool and we'll start heating this thing up. I'm going to try to get it real hot so it'll just come off of there. That's going to be the biggest thing, is try to get it off there as cleanly as we can. So we don't create any new problems on this guitar. So I've had this sitting on the center of the bridge for a little while and I've kind of decided I should get the corner or the edge warmed up. So I'm holding it down with a little piece of maple against the, uh, the wing, I guess. It's up to, oh, 425 degrees, 430 degrees, you can see. I've also got uh, the tools warmed up just slightly off camera. So I'm going to let this get nice and warm. Um, what I can see is all the oils in the bridge bubbling, which tells me that it is definitely a rosewood bridge. Regardless of how dark it is, it is a rosewood bridge. Ebony just does not have the oils that the rosewood does. Stand, I can see all the lights of the city For one man to love one woman so much it's a pity From where I stand I...
There we go. There's a little bit of top on there, but really not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now I'm going to let this top cool down before I go peeling the tape off. So I'm going to give this whole thing just a little couple minutes to cool off. Shouldn't be too long when we come back to this and start moving on. So now these uh, these little bushing parts need to come out and they have nuts on the inside as well and washers as well. And I got this one off and I'm having trouble with this one because the whole thing is just spinning. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. Um, you might have seen me do this before. It's a stick with a hole in it. And I start screwing this in and eventually this can't go in any deeper so it pulls the piece on the top up. Now I've got to figure out how I'm going to get the other one out. I'm really not sure because i got to get that, that bottom nut off and I just can't seem to get it. I might be able to show you that it spins because I can spin it with my fingers. I don't know if you can see it, but it's spinning. And I can't can't grip that. There's no way to do that. I don't know how I'm gonna get that out of there. I'll have to think about it a little bit more. So I got this last one out and it took a little bit of help from Jerry with a left-handed drill bit and he Went from the top and I held the nut on the inside and eventually we got it out. I've also gone ahead and got a little ways on making a new bridge. This is just a flat piece of rosewood at this point. I've got it kind of profiled. It's not quite perfect yet, but it's coming along. But before I really go any further, I really need to fill these old holes where the adjustment was. So I'm going to do that next before we go any further and then we'll go from there. Well, Jerry thought I should point out that yes, it really was a left-handed drill bit. It is spiraled the opposite direction from a right-handed drill bit. That way it cuts in reverse. In that sense, it grabs going left, so it should help me unscrew this. And that's exactly what it did, was it grabbed going in reverse and unscrewed the nut since the nut was held tight. So, yes. It was a real left-handed drill bit. So before we can get going with this bridge, I got to put some plugs in here, and I've had the laser cutter go ahead and cut out some plugs. Um, the bridge plate on this is maple, so I've got maple plugs that fit the smaller hole, and I've got some spruce plugs that fit the larger outside diameter of these holes. So I've got plugs ready to go. I've got some magnets. That's how I'm going to kind of wedge them in. These are almost a little oversized, so you really have to push them in there. And because of the way the laser cutter cuts, they are slightly conical. They have a slight bevel to the edge, so it'll allow me to kind of wedge them in there a little bit. So I'll get some glue ready, and we'll go ahead and stick these in here. I'm pushing it in from the inside, that way I know I can get it flush on the inside of the guitar. I'll put a dot of glue on the top. And these spruce ones are a little too tall, which is okay, because that will allow me to trim them down to the perfect size. So now I'm going to stick a magnet on each side. That'll help press them from each side. Now we'll do it again. So I get a little glue on the outside of this. All right, now we'll give that some time to set up. And then this should be good for me to, I'll kind of carve just a little bit of the top off of those spruce plugs and then we're ready to start placing a bridge. All right, so I'm getting set up here to do some intonation checks for the saddle placement. The bridge is going right where the old bridge used to go. 
because there were no issues with intonation or issues with the top, I made the new bridge exactly the same size as the old bridge. The holes are the exact same spacing. I actually used this on top of here to drill the holes before I put the wings on it. I did the same thing with the shape around the outside. I had it taped to the block. So this should be exactly the same size as this, if not just a little bit bigger. And I mean just a little bit bigger. But anyways, so this is basically placed. I've got it aligned by the holes, so I don't really want to move it anywhere from here. So what I'll do is I'll get my two outside strings on, and I'll get a little saddle, a temporary saddle, out of the uh, saddle cup here, and we'll start to check the intonation to see where the saddle needs to be. I can mark it, we'll take this off, and then we'll route the slot. So from here, I need to get some outside strings on and a saddle. So I've got a little saddle sitting on top of the bridge. I've got a new set of strings here and they're the GHS lights, phosphor bronze, that's what we've been using. So we need the base string. And then you can see I've got the, the temporary tailpiece attached. So I just hook the ball end underneath the little hook. And I can string it like I normally do. Okay, and I'll get the treble string. Now, because I've got this much more string than I'm going to eventually need when I actually string this up. I can trim these ends off so they're not dangling up here on the headstock. And the part that's wrapped around the post will end up getting cut off because I've got this much extra that's going to move this direction. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll start working on getting this tuned up. Where she's not supposed to, but goes anyway. Where I stand, I can hear. So the high E is reading spot on. The low E is maybe just a hair sharp. The tuner's jumping around a lot on me, and I think it's partially in the new strings. That high E looks great. The low E looks good. Alright, so this is good right where it is. So what I'll do is I'll get the fine tip pencil, mark the front edge, because that's the important edge. That's where it leaves the saddle. I'll mark the front edge, and then we can route the saddle slot right to that line. So let me go get a pencil. So you can see right where that saddle is sitting. Now I'll take the fine mechanical pencil. I'm just marking the front edge right on the string. Or well, right where the strings are. I'll go ahead and just mark the whole thing while it's sitting here. Alright, I think that's good. So now I can take the strings off and we should have a perfect line right where the saddle goes. So I think you can see that pencil line right across there. So now what I'll have to do is get set up with the routing jig we have and I'll just route that slot and that is the front edge so we'll route on this side of that line and then we'll be good to go. So it hasn't been that long since Jerry's added this bottom board to this jig here. I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, blue painter's tape and some CA glue to attach my bridge. 
All right. So that'll keep that in place and it won't move. So the whole thing is basically one unit now. Nothing moves. So now what I'll do is I'll get my router set up. And it's just going to be the little Dremel tool and a real small bit. And we'll get set up to cut this. So I think I'm all set up here. I've got some end marks so I know where to stop. This is set up at the correct angle I want it at. So I start and stop right where I want to so long as I keep the base pushed against it. Follows my pencil line nice and perfect. Right now the bit is just barely floating above the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and lower it down. So it's just going to barely touch it. There. So now I'm just kind of scratching the surface. And I think we're good to go. So I'm going to give it one really light pass and then take a look at it and then we'll go deeper from there. Music and laughter Carmilla tells me that's what her young heart is after I see you differently, I see you there I really couldn't have asked for this to turn out any better. It looks really good. The slot looks nice and clean and it's right at the depth I want it at. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this thing on here. I've already wiped down the back with the acetone to get all the oils out of the rosewood out. And it was very oily. I've made sure this top was clean. There's no finish underneath where the bridge is going. I believe we're ready to go. So there's that. That's good to go. We'll let that sit overnight and by in the morning that should be nice and set. And we can work on making a saddle for it. So I've got a saddle started for this. The next thing I'm doing is I'm cleaning out the holes because they had some glue in them. So I've just got a drill bit and I'm basically just re-drilling these. You can see there's no wood coming out. It's just glue. Okay, now that those are cleaned, I can go through and start reaming these so they're big enough to accept the pins. So the way we do this is I take my reamer and I start the hole and I can stick my hand on the inside. And as soon as I start to feel the reamer on the inside, I know to stop. Right there. So I can show you this one the bridge pin will drop right in and this one it won't fit. So I'll go through and do that again to all the holes and we'll be ready to move on. I'm not going to film all of it but I'm putting the strings on this now that I got these holes drilled and the pins fitting. So I'm going to get this, all the strings on and then we'll have a good idea where the saddle needs to be. So I'll bring you back once i got all the strings on it. So I've been working on this quite a bit off camera. Um, I was doing this yesterday as Jerry was recording for the shop talk. But now that it's just me in the shop I can record a little bit more. Um, so all the strings are on here and we're up to pitch. And they're actually looking really good. But I think I'm going to take it just a hair lower. We're sitting at about, oh, it's just a little more than 90 thousandths on the low E. And just 80 thousandths, well, a little more than 80 thousandths on the high E. And that would be fine. I think I'm just going to take it a hair, just a hair lower. Um, you know, it'd be a fine setup, but I think we can get away with lower and then it'll just be a great setup. It'll play really, really easy. And while I have the strings off of it this last time, I'm going to go ahead and use the Renaissance wax on the top. Get this all cleaned up and good to go. We're just looking it over one more time. I also have to vacuum out the inside. 
cannot forget to vacuum out the inside when I have the strings off of it. Alright, so I'll get the strings off of here and we'll take the saddle down one more time, just a little bit, to get this very comfortably low. So I'm just finishing up with the Renaissance wax. I think that helped clean up the top nice and good. It's looking real clean, nice and shiny. Um, I set my calipers to 20 thousandths and etched that on the saddle. So that's 10 thousandths off of the 12, but I didn't quite get to that mark. So we're talking less than 10 thousandths. So that was really close, so I just wanted to take it down just a little bit more. So that's done. We're ready to string this thing back up. So the one thing I said I wasn't going to do, I did. I forgot to vacuum out the inside of the guitar. Luckily I wasn't all the way done. There wasn't too much to undo. But now I've got the vacuum ready and I'm going to clean out the inside from all the bits of glue from re-drilling those holes. You can see I got this thing playing pretty good. I've been enjoying playing it. Um, we did a little bit of work to this, mostly just this bridge. You know, we replaced that bridge. It had that old adjustable bridge that all these Gibsons come with. Um, that's become pretty routine for us at this point. It's 9 out of 10, 8 or 9 out of 10 at least, of these Gibsons of this age come in with that adjustable bridge and it's causing problems. So pretty often that we do that. Some other things I did that I didn't really focus on were there's a couple of spots where the finish is completely rubbed off where I just lightly touched it up with some brushing lacquer. There's a spot down here where it's been kind of rubbed off and then where it picked and I just did that just to kind of seal up the wood make sure there's not a problem in the future. I did a really light fret job on this really nothing major just make sure they were level and they are. It's looking really good. The Height at the nut is really good, so it's really low down here. It is sitting at just under 90 thousandths on the low E and just under 80 thousandths on the high E. So that's a really good height. Nice and comfortable. I made sure everything was intonated with the new bridge and the new saddle. We got this set up really good to play. I think the customer's going to be really happy with this. I'll hand this off to Jerry to look at. I'll see if he has anything to add to it. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed watching this little bridge replacement. If you did, a thumbs up would be appreciated. And even more appreciated would be a subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000. Thanks for watching.